Hey, what is up guys? So today we are going to be talking about Konami kind of killing Yu-Gi-Oh! Now, I've talked about is Yu-Gi-Oh! a dying game, but here with me today I've got All in the AO, which is a player that is outside of the US, and he can give us an insight on some of the other things that have been going on with Konami, and we're going to be covering a few topics. Uh, the topics that I want to cover is like, why is Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, a game that is technically dying out, or it's losing out interest, because sometimes Games just over the course of time, they just go away, you know, like sometimes there's sequels to the game, whether it's a new reiteration of the game like Call of Duty, or sometimes games just, you know, phase out, they get less popular, they get less interest because players are just tired of the same mechanics. Now, we're also going to be talking about the whole Yugi tubing, as some of you guys like to call it, um, and we're going to be spectating some duels just so you guys have something else to look at uh, in the background while we go ahead and have our discussion. But uh, anyways, uh, so all in the AO, why don't you tell us where you're from and then uh, talk a little bit about like your experience. Well, let's kick it off with the uh, topic of recording Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, because uh, that is a topic that I think a lot of players are interested in. Like, they're, they, they want to see, you know, videos out of YCS. They want to see coverage. Yeah, of course. So um, I'm, I'm a UK uh, duelist. I've been playing the game since the, the start, as I'm sure some of you will know. Um, and yeah, so based in the UK, down in London, and um, I think I think the, the biggest thing came to light is I like to do like vlogs at different events. I did one at um, a Weiss, uh, no at a Euros in Amsterdam not too long ago, a couple of years ago, um, and I just like to do different uh, vlogs for uh, different events and. At YCS Prague, just gone in February, um, I did a vlog and I was very cautious of the fact that um, you, you, I was told that you can't film unless you have a certain amount of uh, permission. That it's kind of a standard thing that everyone really says at these events. So I was like, okay, cool, that's fine. Um, so I did a lot of uh, videoing outside of the event and just in general with me and my friends or just seeing how like the Brotherhoods, which is the locals that I go to, uh, kind of just kick back and enjoy the weekend. Um, and I did have some footage of inside the venue. I had a picture of inside the venue, um, but I also had a uh, some footage, but it was the camera was directly pointed at me with nothing really happening in the background. And um, yeah, I was contacted and told, I won't say who, because I still have a lot of respect to them regardless of everything. Um, I was told that this video needed to be taken down under the pretense of I don't have permission um, to be filming at the event. And uh, there was also some grey areas at the fact that I had the public outside of the venue in the video and um, it wasn't really clarified under that circumstances. Um, so it, it just got taken down and I was pretty discouraged for uh, about a week or so to, to do anything to do with the game to be honest. but. Yeah, with, with the filming aspect in uh, Yu-Gi-Oh, it's, it's a real grey area um, because on the one hand you see certain people who will have videos up and who will be in the event and it will be great and then you'll have other people who will be targeted and um, part of it I think it's just part and parcel is because I'm known in the scene as I'm sure people know um, and the more that you're known the more that you're targeted and made an example of um, but since that video was that whole catastrophe was taken down. I've seen multiple videos, I won't say who because I'm not a rat, mm -hmm. and nothing has happened to them. Mm -hmm. When I was explicitly told Pete Konami would be gunning after it, nothing has happened. So that that's the one that leaves the most bad taste in my mouth. Uh, it, it's because perhaps they haven't seen those videos because like they don't you know invest, uh, I guess, pe they don't hire people to go search out on YouTube and delete these videos. But the thing that, like, I want to mention first off that I want uh, Konami to be successful. Like, I, I think that yeah, they're doing 100%. a lot of poor decisions, and it's because maybe they don't know or they're doing things backwards. Um, I know for you, you didn't want to mention names, which is totally fine. But I think as a company, I need to mention the people's names so then they can address some of these issues. Okay, mm -hmm. so th this is something that I have not talked about before, and yeah. this is an absolutely ridiculous thing. And I, wa I want your opinion on this too. Okay, so <laughs> yeah. I had permission from head PR to actually record at the YCS. Uh, right. I, I even I had an email to the guy that was running the event. It was an email sent by the head PR that gave mm -hmm. me permission to record. Uh, when I had got there, I let him know who I was, and I said that, you know, I asked him, you know, did you get the email? He said, yes, I did, but you cannot record here. And I asked why, and he said, oh, you need permission slips uh, for waivers. But I said, 
someone in PR already said it was the okay. Uh, he gave me the okay, and he wanted permission slips. Now, I think maybe this can be due to him not realizing how content and media has evolved. Getting yeah. a permission slip or a waiver and signing it is not that great anymore. There are no. multiple reasons why. Um, one stupid reason is because they can say that, that they are under duress. But the main thing is that they could just sign it as someone else. And that's the biggest problem. Or they can say, yeah. that wasn't me who signed the paperwork. Yeah. And that could be due to them just changing their mind. What is much better is getting consensual uh, agreement upon audio. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of print channels that at the end of their videos, they will show off a small reel and they will say like, hey, is it okay if I use your footage? And then they mm -hmm. say yes. Getting audio consensual agreement is much better than getting a waiver. And I had mentioned also that none of their faces would be shown. And technically, they are still already uh, wavering their rights by entering the venue itself because it is privately yep. owned. Unless there's specific areas or, you know, if it's outside of the U.S., there might be different regulations. But it's better to have audio consensual agreement, again, than waiver uh, agreement. Now, the guy, Dan Posey, he stated this. He says, well... I don't know, what if um, there's an earthquake and the camera falls and you accidentally record someone else that didn't want to be recorded? And I had, I had said, if that happens, I will gladly give you the footage to delete that. And he said, well, I don't know if I can trust you on that. And like, it's so ridiculous because I have more subscribers than the official Konami Yu-Gi-Oh! YouTube. Yeah. And I can give them more publicity and it only helps the game. There's no negative, uh, I guess, um, viewership that goes along with just getting more people introduced in the game showing more people the game it's going to grow the yeah. game and a lot of people have mentioned uh, nintendo doing uh the, the same thing that essentially konami is doing which is there was a breast cancer uh thing that was going on for evo uh for mm -hmm. super smash brothers and nintendo was yep. like no you can't broadcast our game this is and, and so many people complained about it nintendo was like okay 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 and i think yeah. that maybe we just need this push because I, I don't understand how someone could say, like, I don't want you recording at this event, even though you can get uh, audio consensual agreement, even though that you are known in the community. And on top of that, Konami has sent me stuff. I've worked with Konami and made videos that were basically commercials promoting the game uh, absolutely mm. for free. Uh, in return, they did give me product to show, but at the same time, yep. that's working with the company. I'm not someone that has uh, <coughs> any intentions of destroying the game. I want yeah. the game to be successful because this is also part of my revenue. And yeah. it's crazy that they don't want this exposure. Um, and they delete, co well, you can't even comment anything on YouTube. They, you can't comment ah. a lot of stuff on their Facebook page. They delete the comments. They don't want any constructive criticism, even though the game has shown itself uh, to be going down in views. And it goes uh, to show that, like, I guess maybe... They don't want the feedback, yet they're having lower numbers, which you'd figure if a company wants to be successful, they would want the game to grow. And if the mm. game isn't, isn't growing, like they're losing numbers, whether it's sales or retention rate on views, they would want to try to you know listen to what the fans or the viewers want. Uh, and yeah, cool. I think it comes down to this. Let me know what you think of this also. Is the mm -hmm. game is, not only do players... Uh, want to leave the game because you know a lot of players have literally left because of pendulums after that the viewers yeah. and the sales count of Yu-Gi-Oh has been going down and the problem is I think that the game is too complex that newer players have such a hard time going into the game when you have to explain to them exceeds synchros pendulums battle phase damage step damage calculation missing the timing it's too complicated for people to get into the game and people are leaving and there's not enough people coming back yeah I, yeah, I do agree because they, it, as you said, it's just if you if you think this this game is meant to be for kids and the, the a big market is children playing with the with their friends buying you know single packs of boosters. We all remember how exciting it was when we were kids if we played when we were kids, getting a booster pack, you know, just seeing what the cards were like. And when you just have a look at what is you know big and playable. It's just so complicated. Pendulums are just, in my opinion, still an overpowered mechanic that puts every single deck that was in the previous years completely down the line and completely useless. Mm -hmm. With um, the structured deck like Monarchs, I think they're trying to reel in a certain amount of people, which is, this is a really simple, basic deck. You can kind of do well because there are simple mechanics. You tribute summon, it's kind of about it. But... 
with the core sets, everything's just so complicated, as you said. It's it's understandable why people struggle and don't want to come back into the game because they will remember how um, certain decks have worked for them. It was maybe simple. Obviously, there were always degenerate decks in this game, going all the way back to the Dada or even before that hand control. But now it's just so painfully um, focused on this pendulum mechanic that they're pushing it so hard because obviously it's their new mechanic, so obviously they're going to push it and, and not just drop it, that people just don't like it, and they don't like it so much that they are just throwing their hands up and going, you know what, I'm done. Mm. Yeah, I think that uh, one the one problem that I have is that they really need to listen to some of the viewers, and they have kind of tried. Mm. Uh, I don't know if it's the same in the UK, but on your bo- uh, like the single boosters that are packaged like individually, do they have yep. a, a small link to a survey? Because we have that right now. Um, I haven't checked. In fact, I have some packs here. But, uh, but are they single like um, packs that are like basically able to be displayed? Like there, there's a little thing that lets you hang it yeah. up on display. Okay. Um, on the no, back, it on the back doesn't of seem video. like there is. Not the pack it's just... itself, but. It, on the like, there's like the there's like the clear plastic on the back of the cardboard. There's like, hey, take this small survey, give us feedback, because it seems like they want feedback in one sense, but I think that the best type of feedback is from their Facebook, from their Twitch, from their YouTube, not yeah. trying to get some person. That, I mean, most people they just open the pack, and they just throw away the trash. They're not really paying yep. attention to uh, getting the information from the uh, like or the. Uh, uh, they're not looking at the package to like, oh, let me go ahead and use my smartphone, use the QR code, and then like, yeah, exactly. uh, try. It, it's just, it's much better just to have feedback, uh, at least from my standpoint. But, uh, Check. yeah, like, I Check feel like, th- Sorry, uh, like the guy that said that if there was an earthquake and my camera fell and they could record someone that didn't have, like, I didn't have their consensual, like, agreement to record. I feel like at that point, I can't even argue with them. Like, they're so, like, beyond, like, Unreasonable and unworkable. Like, what are, that what are your thoughts is, on that? That example is such like a ridiculously yeah. hypothetical and situation that will probably zero point zero 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 chance yeah. of happening. And the, the thing but is, it, you can't argue it because yeah. there is a possible chance it can happen. Someone could maybe nudge into you by accident, and your hand flips over for a millisecond to film someone else, and then back. Yeah, and and while I understands that it's it's to do with uh, the the I say inver- uh, invasion of privacy type thing maybe but it's it's such it's such a ridiculous thing like people I've I've done so many videos and loads of coverage mainly for the the brotherhood and we always put up a sign because I'm the official um, kind of media representative there I do all of the filming all of the streaming and everything like that we always put up a sign and say, you know, obviously we're going to be filming at this event, but I have never once met someone at a Yu-Gi-Oh event who has said, I do not want to be filmed. Like, do not include me in this, because mm-hmm. people enjoy it, and they actually like to see the media side of it. So when they turn around and say, this crazy hypothetical situation that will never happen, but it might happen, so you can't do it, it's just like, it's so disheartening, and it's just like, yeah, well- just... Just chill. Yeah. Well, the worst part is, I even said, if that even happens, I will, I will gladly delete the footage. If there's any earthquake, I will delete the yeah. footage. And he said that he couldn't trust me, and it's just like, well, I, I don't <laughs> understand that. Like, what else do you need? And like, the thing is, it only promotes the game. It only helps him. Exactly. Um, and like I said, like Dan Posey, like I, I don't understand your viewpoint. Uh, and I, like I said, like I want to address this because if someone, in the in the actual like I guess power, so to speak. It has hmm. this ability to be so negative towards the game. You you need to like call him out. And if I was someone that was working, I'd be like, okay, let's address this issue. Let's let this guy know that uh, you know this is something that should be addressed and shouldn't happen in the future. Especially when I had head PR already give me the okay, which is someone yeah. else that's higher up. Uh, I mean, I I still was able to record at the event. It's just you have to record outside. He's like, you know what? I'll, I'll yeah. make an agreement with you. He said that I could record outside of the venue. How is that making it okay with me? This is next to an airport, which is very loud outside of the venue, and it was just—it was absolutely ridiculous uh, that I and had to do that. Technically, they don't—they technically they can't dictate what you film outside of their yeah, exactly. official venue. Exactly, it's not anyway. even—it's like it's basically it's like a slap in the face, and then saying, 
Oh wait, wait, hold on. I didn't. I won't. I won't slap you that hard though. It's like it's still negative yeah. at the end of the day, and it's just like it's not why you. Yeah, it's yeah, it's not compromising at all. It's, it's, it's just saying compromising. I'm gonna make it sound like a compromise. So go outside. <laughs> exactly, and again, at the end of the day, this only helps and promotes the game. So I don't see why they're doing this. And on top of that, um, if they go into that event, which is privately owned by someone else that is tactically being mm -hmm. rented out. Uh, they they have they lose their rights anyways uh, as far as like what they can and can't do because it's private property in the first place. Yeah. And like I said before, since I work with Konami, uh, I feel like I should have I guess granted access to it, and I feel like everyone should technically have this granted access to it. If you look at Wizards of the Coast, uh, Magic the Gathering, they yeah. encourage all of this stuff. They want people to record their game because it's more publicity. It's the same yeah. reason why I feel like. So many people got on Nintendo, and Nintendo was like, "All right, you can record Smash Brothers, you can live stream Smash Brothers," yeah, because yeah. it's going to, it's because people were upset about it, and I think that it only again it encourages people to play the game. I know I talked to Simply Unlucky at one point, and he had uh, tried to contact Konami to work with him, and they actually mm. told him that they wanted to sue him for using their footage of the cards, which he already purchased, which he technically owns. Uh. Uh, and I think that that's just. It's kind of crazy what, uh, you know, some of the things that have been going on. Maybe they just need to address some of the other people that uh, are doing some of these things. Maybe they don't want some of this. Maybe it's just like, you know, just some obscure people in the company that for whatever reason they aren't, um, uh, I guess, encouraging the game's growth. Because yeah. um, for those of you that didn't know, Gold Series has been the, one of the best-selling sets that comes out every single year. And mm -hmm. right now, this one that we're, we're just getting now... It's three fourths of the price. It has some of the most crazy reprints. We have two YCS prize cards. We have cards that just came out. And in a few weeks, guys, the ban list is going to come out. And they're going to push the set, sell it, and then they're going to hit everything. I mean, I don't know if you remember the Mega Tins. They're like, oh, everyone can play Shadows. Oh. Everyone can play Cleans. Oh. Everyone can play yeah. these decks. All, all of you guys have access to the deck. Okay, let's hit all of the decks now. A few weeks right after. And that's that's just such, such bad business practice in my personal opinion to sell everything to the people and then like two weeks later be like oh good luck man <laughs> it is because because they know that once there's the initial buzz of this product is so amazing like gold it's like one of the greatest reprint sets ever mm -hmm. and with the as you said with the megatons they they pushed it so hard it's like megatons everywhere this is this is so amazing you've got these these previous packs these previous archetypes are now accessible to everyone and now that it's going to flood the market, we've got new products coming out. You know what? Let's let's just uh, gently push you onto, or not gently, but force you onto uh, not being able to use it anymore. And it's it's always something that's never really sat well with me because, on the one hand, they there's there's no reason why they shouldn't be looking at the meta and using the ban list to curb anything that is ridiculous. Now, there's obviously going to be multiple arguments that they do or don't. Um, but then there's the other side of it that they have an agenda. They use it simply to push their new products. They think this deck is popular. It's really good. So we're just going to hit it and we'll uh, we'll just move on from there because now you can't play the deck. You need to reinvest into the, into the game uh, just to be able to compete because your deck is now dead. Yeah. So it's, it, it, is, it is just... It's it's always not really sat well oh, with yeah. me, and I'm I'm really I'm really honestly I've been thinking really worried about the the up and coming um, the ban list. Just looking at the uh, OCG, we do obviously we have technical no uh, tangible link with the OCG, but sometimes we can get a good feeling as to what they're going to do, and if they hit everything, if they knew to everything like they did in the OCG, I'm really worried as to what might actually backlash from that because. Also, we don't have the next set, Shining Victories, until May? It's another month or so away. I don't know what people would play. Like, if you hit everything, there's nothing coming out yet. Uh, well, I mean, in the TCG, we do have the exclusive of Cosmos right now, and we do have more support announced for that. So if they hit everything, that just makes Cosmos sell even better. Um, I also feel like... I mean, normally we'd get the, you know, March ban list or, you know, April ban list uh, relatively mm. soon. But the thing is, I feel like yeah. they're holding back on it literally just to sell more gold. And then they're just going to hit everything in gold, like, a few weeks right after the ban list. After gold has enough time to flood the market, sell, like, again, just like the Mega Tens that you've announced or uh, that you mentioned yeah. before. And I think that players, a lot of players have recognized this. And they're like, I don't want to purchase cards because this hurts the secondary Yu-Gi-Oh! market as well. Uh, yeah. When yeah. they're like, oh, let's 
you know, not buy cards because, you know, the ban list could be right around the corner. I don't want to invest a few hundred dollars only to get completely screwed over uh, by some new adjusted ban list, which, how, what do you think of that? Like, let me ask you uh, your thoughts on, like, the adjusted uh, so, ban list. Yeah, so I, 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 was, I was still playing in the era when we got the E-ban on, on the dad era. Okay. Um, that was really weird. And that's all it felt like. It just felt like an emergency ban, and I'm pretty sure 90% of the community were calling it that. It's a, this adjust list was was just really strange for a few reasons. One, they came out and said Pepe is too strong. Um, you know, what whatever event it was, it was Anaheim or something. No, no, it might not have been. Anyway, it was some YCS, and it was basically 29 of the 32 were Pepe. It was absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> Quite clear that the deck is very good and uh, bordering on tier zero depending on what your definition of it is of tier zero but the other thing is arguably necros had the same grasp on the meta the fact that they were just dominating everything but it took them nine months essentially to do anything about it mm -hmm. and I it, it, it just felt I was just like why now what is it now that you think Pepe is just so strong compared to these other decks that, were that so are strong. arguably just so strong, but you let them go? On? <laughs> it, it, did, yeah. it really confused me. Yeah, well, okay, because the, the topic that I want to talk about is, like, Konami stop killing Yu-Gi-Oh! is that what, what do you think is better for the overall interest? Because I feel like most players in this game, whether people want to admit it or not, are casual. There's always in any game that's going to be more yeah. casual than competitive what do you think is the best interest for the game to continue going not what's healthy for the game but what's in the best interest to keep sales going because as a business that is again their it's going to be their main priority which it should be yeah you'd hope um it it's it, it's it's just a such such a strange thing because there are so many things that you could technically say that they they would need to do, and it it could kind of go full circle in the fact that you need to talk to your community more, where you know us us lot who are who are maybe seen as some certain voices of the community just because you know we represent our certain areas. Um, it it'd be nice if for one they stepped up their communication yes. and actually asked what are we doing wrong? What would you like to see, like. I feel at times that that maybe feel a little bit too important to be like, we know what we're doing, don't worry. As opposed to every single business and every single company, no matter who they are, will at some point turn to the community, turn to their fans and say, okay, what do you think of this? How, how are we doing? I, I, I never not known a, uh, a company or community or game, whatever, to do that. Mm -hmm. And that's really important, especially for for um, converting the casual players to the meta players because if um, the players think personally as well for me if I think that Konami are doing their utmost to put on these big tournaments and say you know we're gonna we're gonna cr uh, try and accommodate for your needs and for your interests and uh, the likes of yourselves then I'll be more interested to go to an event currently Honestly, I go to events to meet my subscribers, my fans, and go with friends. I'm not bothered about the tournament, so you could technically class me as that casual. If I wasn't, didn't have a YouTube channel, if I only had a few friends in the game, I'd just stick to locals. Mm -hmm. Well, also, the, the prize pool for this game uh, isn't enough to make a pro player, an actual pro player. It, he cannot well, have is, it as a profession. And that's yeah, this, like another this problem. Is the other thing. With there's there was there was one thing that um, a guy called uh, Jake Quincy, you, you guys might know him. Um, he came fourth in YCS Prague, did very well, very very well known uh, British player, and his prize was an old iPad, and that was it. <laughs> well, what and place did he get? Fourth. Oh wow! And especially if you look at traveling the hotel cost the deck itself is going to be more the, i'm sure his deck costs more than the ipad itself and at that point yeah. <laughs> what what is the uh, the the cost to benefit ratio and then there's the risk involved too because yeah it's just it's yeah. just insane and the amount of time and effort that you put into it it's it's not just the the cost of going to an event getting the hotel the money that you, uh, you you know you convert over to local currency, the food that you you know you buy there, all of this stuff, entry. It's also the effort that you put into to actually test for the event. And if you quantify that to say your time versus the money, what you should be getting out of it, 
it just falls completely flat. Yeah. There was the Dragon Jewel, I think it was. Um, the the winner of the Dragon Jewel got the Dark Lord prizes or the Dark Lord prizes, and I was like. Hold yeah. on. Actually, that's a really old price card. What yeah. do you do? Yeah, okay. We also had that uh, it re recently here at Lysias Vegas. That that was the price card. It's like it's it is kind of a slap in the face because I feel like not only is that card not really worth anything as a prize card, it was it it, really it was also pretty much irrelevant when it came out. No one no one was like, I'm gonna make a Dark Lord Turbo deck. Like it's yeah. just it's kind of sad, and it just shows that maybe they printed those and they didn't give them out so they're like well whatever let's just use these because we still have them it's just it does feel like that it feels like they've got a bit of a backlog yeah they're they just, just like get rid of yeah they're just like oh we couldn't get rid of these because you know turnouts or like other tournaments that maybe they had to perhaps cancel um they're just using some of the older stuff because they don't they don't have the funds and money again like you said that they were using old ipads and at this this year's ycs I, th I think it's like ipad 2 is the iPad on like three or four? I don't know what they're on right now. IPads, I think iPads on like four, and it's like oh wow, yeah, it's it, it was really, and he was so angry. And if I was in that situation, I'd be like, this iPad is worth about yeah. 120 pounds, 150 dollars. Yeah. That's about yeah, it. Yeah, if if you're driving or traveling, like you got to count basically three days uh, worth of like you know like work. And if you go like uh, you know even at minimum wage, you could pretty much just buy an iPad from that. And then well, again, yeah. you have to buy the deck and stuff. So like, <clears throat> it, it, they're not really supporting the community enough in the uh, professional aspect of the game as in the competitive scene. The casual scene gets kind of screwed over because they they want yeah. all these meta cards. By the time they get them, they're banned or they're nerfed or like they're rotted and you know there's all these problems. And I feel like I I, I know I'm sounding really negative throughout this whole video. Even all in the AO is pretty much like saying things that. Uh, you know, it wouldn't be, I guess, in the best interest, so to speak, of Konami. But I think no. that you guys need to understand, we want this game to be successful. And 100%. we're just giving suggestions for the game that Konami <clears throat> just doesn't allow us to do because they censored their YouTube, even in the OCG. I feel like perhaps it is the OCG that has some type of um, mindset that, like, the, uh, as far as you get related, censor everything. Don't let them comment. Don't let them like. Don't let them say anything about the game. Yet the game is dying. Like, it's... It's not even just me being upset that my views aren't that high. It's I've talked to multiple card vendors. I've had sponsors contact me to promote other card games because they're like, well, I know you already work with this guy with Yu-Gi-Oh. Would you be interested in working with us with this card game because it's doing much better than Yu-Gi-Oh right now? And I'm like, yeah. what? This game is doing better than Yu-Gi-Oh? I, and I, 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 just, I see like some of these other card games, and I'm just like, I can't believe these are doing better than Yu-Gi-Oh as far as sales. And um, it could just be maybe that website isn't just doing that hot with Yu-Gi-Oh. But I could definitely say from my numbers as well as other people's numbers from the past couple months that it just hasn't been doing as well as it once was. And maybe it, with uh, us as a community, we can talk and maybe get our uh, you know thoughts out and we can improve the game. Because at the end of the day, um, this helps <clears throat> me and it technically helps you guys and it'll help the business. It's yeah. an overall win, 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 win. So I think that uh, yeah, we can uh, perhaps address these. Is there anything no, that you wanted to talk about? Um, I mean, I covered pretty much what I wanted to talk about. Basically, yeah. I think that overall, let's just let's just say this for from my standpoint. This could make Yu-Gi-Oh stop dying. Date the ban list. Have a set like time frame every four months. They before they were like, we're gonna adjust the ban list every four months. Oh wait, hold on. Let's just wait until Gold Series ban everything and then just like count all of our money that we made, even though we're selling Gold Series for three fourths of the price, and that that's definitely showing you that like they're not doing so hot. Uh, date the ban list. Give us a ban list date so we know when to invest into cards because, you know, secondary market does affect the game quite a bit. Yep. People will quit the game if they get screwed over too hard by all these reprints and stuff like that. So we need uh, a dated ban list, um, and we also need a time frame of when it's coming out. Uh, I think that that's also very key and important. And then yeah. giving us better price support, letting uh, more people record at Yu-Gi-Oh! Actually, everyone. It's not even more people. I don't even want to say, oh, I'm known in the community and I work with Konami, therefore I should have special rights. I want yeah, we don't every single... I, yeah, I want every single person to record because at the end of the day, it does improve uh, the game. It lets more people see <clears> the game and hear about the game, watch more content in the game, which gets them introduced into you know, maybe a new deck and they want to build something like that. And I think those those three things essentially let more exposure so like like i said let people record date the ban list and um and getting feedback from the community else is also the, the last thing that i think is really important is there anything that you feel like could be important to make this game live longer 
I, th- I think I think a lot of it is what you've said, but um, just going back to a certain thing, uh, the I think recently as well, like my numbers have also been down, mm-hmm. uh, if if not half of what they are, and I believe it's I don't think it's because my content's dropped or anything, but a lot of people have have as you said have been feeling the exact same thing, and recently over the past few months, I think a lot of people have felt very betrayed. So with especially over with the well with uh, just speaking for the the UK scene, I don't know about uh, over where you are, but. Um, with the hit of Pepe, everyone decided to reinvest in um, Docs because it had Doc, uh, Doc Destroyer in. Mm-hmm. Then all of a sudden, uh, the Gold Series gets hit. So pe- people uh, people who invested in Bosch when it first came out, obviously Pe- uh, Pendra Magician was quite a high expensive card. You needed three of them and uh, other, other cards in there. People invested in that. They spent a lot of money on it and also previous sets. Deck gets emergency hit. Okay, right. Bit weird, but whatever. Best deck for the meta players is now Cosmo. Go over to Cosmo. Oh, we need to get these Dart Destroyers. Dart Destroyer shoots up to $110 or whatever it was. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, three weeks later, Gold Series gets uh, comes out. Oh, look, we're reprinting everything. It's a massive slap in the face. I was speaking to someone who is a very competitive player, uh-huh. and they said that, um, in their opinion, Pepe, before the adjusted list, obviously was the best deck. Yeah. They want to do well at events. Ergo, they have the best deck. They put the money into it. All of a sudden, they get hit. They basically have worthless cards that they can't even sell off for retail to put money towards Dart Destroyer. So they get, okay, I'm going to pick up the deck. Spend another £400 on it. Oh, wait, it gets hit. They said that they calculated a loss of about six to seven hundred pounds just on those two decks because of what happened, mm-hmm. and I think that it it leaves such a mistrusted feeling that you have no idea what they're going to do. So yeah. why should I invest in their product if they're just going to willy nilly say, "Hey, right, okay, we decided we're going to make this available to everyone." So here are some really easy to get reprints. And it, that is one thing that I, I really don't like. The other thing is the Forbidden Limited list, how they don't have a date anymore. I did a massive rant on this mm-hmm. on my channel because, in my opinion, there is no reason why they can't give us a date. I understand why they said, hey, we're not going to give you a date just because we want to see how the meta goes, how it all um, pa- uh, pans out so we can make sure we can keep it um, you know, curbed, healthy, and fair. I understand that. Oh, I, I don't. I don't think. think hold on. Go, 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 However, go it's not happening like that. Uh-huh. So hold on. I, I think that one thing that people don't, a lot of people don't know, especially when they're just starting this game, is Yu-Gi-Oh is not a fair game. It will never be a fair game. It has no intentions of ever being a fair game. Um, That's the ironic thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But uh, I mean, they they do things to stop some of the cards from being as powerful, or the decks, I should say, from being as mm-hmm. powerful as they once were, yet they re-released cards that have the same effects. Like, going back to uh, Scout and Monkey Board, like the Clifford Scout, it's like, okay, yep. one card Pendulum Scale, two OP, put it to one. Monkey Board, three. Oh, wait, it's two OP, put it to one. They're just going to re-release the same mechanic over and over. We've seen it, oh, Tower is two OP. Okay, let's go with the Quant Super Quantum, and then let's go with the Raid Raptor. Those cards are inherently the same card as towers. They're like this one monster that's immune to everything and it's like, you can't do anything to it, good luck, you lose. Uh, I know Utopia yeah. Lightning gets over it, but if if these decks can We, we don't even have that, because it's not legal for us. Oh. <laughs> it's yeah. because, because, we, for, because for the mangas and the Shonen Jumps, if it's not printed in a set over here for us, like a special edition, not legal oh, for us. Yeah, down to I, th- I think that's absolutely ridiculous too, because that also makes it more expensive for you guys to purchase. I know yep. for the longest time you guys couldn't run uh, Quasar. Because it hadn't had a print. Um, Two years. <laughs> and, and, and it's just, it's so sad uh, that that kind of stuff it's, happens. It's shocking. It's yeah, shocking. It, yeah, and uh, it's unfortunate, but um, I mean, I think that they should just, I understand maybe if, I don't know, I don't know why they would not have a print, but okay, that could be one small thing I think that they could adjust. It's just allow you guys to use them. I don't know how yeah. much it would increase the price to. Um, for you guys to make that purchase of that card, but I think that you guys should still have access to it being a legal card that you can use because you know some cards just might be relevant in the game um was it the same for spark warrior because i remember or not spark warrior uh start of spark dragon because i remember at one point that was actually seeing play with vandy's empty that was seeing play yeah a year yeah. and a half before we got that oh okay yeah i i, I yeah. can't see from experience so it's good that we have uh you know someone else you know. <laughs> 
from a different part of the world, like you know, explaining. Yeah, we 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 te we tend to get pretty screwed over um, yeah. with those facts because no, I feel like you just friends, don't get anything, and general, by the time we all get, get it, over. it's irrelevant. Yeah, and by the time you get it, like same thing with a lot of the cards we get here in the the uh, TCG when they finally get, gave us the Gaga Gaz, they were completely outdated and irrelevant once yeah. we got them. And same with the Chronomalies, like they just by the time they're out, it's worthless. But uh, I, th yeah. I think the most. I think the most high-profiled one recently was we only just got Diamond King Crab about a month ago. <laughs> oh yeah, and by that time. Like... And that was that was your out to towers for us. We were like, well, great. We we'll we'll just sit here and try and play around this and yeah. then just lose. <laughs> like really great. Bad. Yeah. All right. Well. But like in in, in recap very quickly because um, obviously this is going yeah, on yeah. for a while. I think I think. There, there are a couple of things that we've gone over that, that they need to try and do, but one of the big things is just please listen to the community. The community is why this game is still going on. To push us aside and not actually respect us enough to listen to what we want to do and what we think of the game and what is killing it for a lot of people is actually quite insulting. Yeah. So it's it's listen, just just listen to us and don't screw over the people who are actively trying to promote your product like everyone goes to these events and it's all exciting and the konami um coverage is getting much better i i think it is actually nice to see and the YC ycs uh, las vegas stream was really nice um but people don't see the other side of it they don't see it from they see a very polished side from the konami side and and maybe audited and from our side, it's how much fun we have when we go to these events. We have all these friends, and we, we all just join together and just have a good time. And you don't really see that on the streams. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's a big part of the community that's missing, that they're really missing out on. And they're just punishing us for trying to help them. Mm -hmm. And I get that they might be scared of what some people might be able to do. And if so, just if you're really that worried, go after those people. But... People who are doing nothing wrong, people who are really promoting your game, love the game, invest so much time and effort into it, put all this post-production in. Just, just, it's it's not the end of the world. Chill out. Yeah. I mean, like, when you look at other, like, game companies, they, they'll fly people out, like, to, for Call of Duty events or all these other games. Yet, if Yu-Gi-Oh! just did that and was like, okay, there's a new set, let's fly out some of the, uh, you know, people that are doing really good stuff in the community and showcasing the game. Let's fly them out, let's show them all the new stuff, let's let's promote the new product and show them all the combos, give them, you know, a few days and let them record footage with the yeah. new decks to get people all hyped up and to play some of the it'd newer be, stuff. It'd be so amazing that, it'd just be, it, it'd be priceless. Yeah. Um, it, 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 it's absolutely priceless. And the thing is, other game companies do this because it is successful and they gain growth from it yeah. and that in turn, like, even though, like, if they have to pay for, let's say, flights or accommodations or, like, they're giving us the new decks, which Yu-Gi-Oh! It's, it's very cheap to reproduce, like, cards, whereas, yeah. like, with an Xbox or, like, you know, a console, obviously, that costs more money. It's so yeah, cheap to give us the, the new stuff and let us play with it, let us showcase it, and that can make it so you guys, as a company, Konami, would gain more money and more exposure to the game and introduce more people to the game. I mean, we have the movie coming out recently, our... Pretty, relatively uh, soon, soon yeah. and that's that's going to increase a lot of that's going to increase all of our uh, revenue because people are going to be interested in like oh what's this Yu-Gi-Oh game I'll just watch the yeah, anime of course yeah but yeah but uh, anyways thanks for watching thanks all the AO for coming on and having this discussion with me if you guys want to check thanks out his channel much. I will leave yep. it down below in the description box and you guys can go ahead and feel free to sub them but thanks for watching guys and we're signing out see you later.